you know, just to take that economic transformation argument forward, uh, and let's talk a little bit about the global context as well, uh, TV. Uh, you know, things are slowing down, but we're still, India is still under 2% of world trade today. Uh, the <clears throat> aspiration is to be able to double our exports by 2025. Again, a whole bunch of recommendations have been made by Surjit Bhalla and others to the government. It's not the stuff that we don't know. Uh, the question is one of execution. So what would the aspiration really be on India's integration with the rest of the world, uh, given the fact that we aspire for double-digit growth? Sure. So I think it's uh, important for India to plug into the opportunities globally but we should also recognize the fact that uh, globally most countries are getting more and more insular. Everyone yeah. is trying to protect their markets. Uh, it's happening in the U.S. Uh, it's uh, starting to happen in Europe. And, uh, you know, China is going to start doing more and more of that yeah. as they feel more threatened. Mm. So we should be conscious of that. So and what about the opportunity that the escalation between the U.S. and China trade tensions, uh, you know, what does that realistically mean for India? And what will we need to do immediately to be able to set the ground to capture that? Because so, this is not going away sure, in a hurry. Absolutely. So I think uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities, particularly for uh, technology and IP-led manufacturing in India, because India has a skilled workforce that's required. I think India missed the bus for textiles and many other such areas where Vietnam, Bangladesh, and other countries stepped in mm. as an alternate option for someone looking outside China. So I think in India, with the huge uh, engineering base that we have, the technology base that we have, and the fact that we are an interesting enough domestic market for most uh, uh, multinationals, mm. we should leverage that. Mm. We have an opportunity to attract them into India because of the domestic market and use India. I think the auto industry is a great example of coming into India because India was an attractive market yeah. and also exporting out of India. Mm. So that should be the model follow. So be open. Don't yeah. close. India should not close. Uh, India itself. should not close. I think India should Don't encourage. go in for tit for tat tariffs. Don't take that approach is what I you're would, suggesting. I would, I would always say open it up for investments first yeah. so that investments come in and then follow through on the trade. Auto, exam, auto industry is a classic example. Mm. You open it up for investments. Mm. Everyone, the best in the world came in, yeah. set up factories here. You didn't open it up immediately for mm. importing cars. Mm. But now we have a very strong auto industry, a very strong auto component industry mm. who are world beaters. Yeah. So I think it's a good model for us to follow. Domestic market is attractive enough to attract investments mm. and uh, use this as a manufacturing base for exports. I think it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, yeah, CB, you know, the expectation is that, of course, there was a majority government previously as well, but this is an even more decisive mandate. Now, what the government does with this decisive mandate is the question. Uh, will we see, for instance, market reforms in, uh, in agriculture, which is the expectation and uh, also the hope on the part of the government? Uh, IBC, there is talk about group insolvency and personal insolvency uh, and the amendments being brought in with respect to that. Labor codes, the expectation is that it will be brought in in the upcoming session of Parliament. What does the legislative agenda look like uh, from an industry perspective? So, you know, one of the things which uh, the Prime Minister has talked about, uh, and, and this one, one phrase what would you like to take, uh, take on from there is Safka Vishwas. Yeah. And I think number one, which is one expects, is to have that mutual trust now. Mm. There has been this trust deficit. We'd like has to it gotten worse? Well, it, it has been pretty, pretty poor, as we have, we have all agreed on it. And, and what we need to see is to get out of that. Mm. We need to see that uh, that, that deficit narrows. Mm. There's been a tough one in the last few uh, uh, couple of years and months uh, gone mm. by. So we need to get that back onto track. Mm. Uh, so definitely there we, we would need to see that type of trust developing, that type of space being given, mm. that type of... Uh, and and that, that's got a lot... lot. In fact, in the, in, in the coming up, the, the budget that's coming up, that's mm. one. Second, this is a huge mandate, and and uh, soon we will see uh, 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 you know the numbers even in the Rajya Sabha in the, uh, yeah. in the upper house looking positive. Right. So it is a, a window, if one can say, for uh, for the next three, three and a half, four years, for us to really bat on the front foot to bring those legislative reforms, which will which will actually bring in a very very long term mm. impact on the economy and mm. the country. So yes, uh, you, uh, uh, one of the one of the things that we uh, we uh, Prime Minister had earlier talked about yeah. was doubling farmers' income. Yeah. So huge opportunity in the agri agriculture side on, on on reforms, and I think these are the ones that one would uh, one would tend to see besides the one that you covered. A absolutely, and that's the hope, uh, Mr. Kotak. You know, I want to pick up on the point that CB made about the trust deficit, uh, and his argument. 
argument is that it's gotten worse. But it's also gotten worse because the private sector hasn't really, uh, you know, held up its side of the bargain. I mean, you know, whether it's Island FS, which you're closely uh, sort of involved with, or other promoters uh, being besieged with problems related to governance, uh, leverage, and so on and so forth. Do you, what, what can be done to, to bridge this deficit? I think corporate governance um, as a part of building Vishwas uh, from the corporate sector side with the government should be a non-negotiable. Mm. And I'm, I'm pretty clear that as CII and as all of us sitting here, we are all committed to uh, corporate India living up to high standards of governance, mm. is something which we at CII actively promote and it has to be the basis of this Vishwas. Mm. If you can't trust numbers, if you can't trust accounts, there is a fundamental deficit which has been seen in the last few months and years. Yeah. It is time for corporate India to recognize that in addition to creative and entrepreneurial spirits, mm. discipline and process to run concerns fairly and equity, equitably for all stakeholders mm. is the basis on which Vishwas will be built by corporate you India. Know, as we go about building this Vishwas, and, and I go back to my point, and I think you and I have chatted about this in the past, uh, that you know balance sheets have not just been broken, but balance sheets have also been cooked. Uh, so in that context then, uh, you know, how easy is it going to be, and in the cleanup process, uh, is growth going to suffer? No, I think uh, which may not necessarily be a bad thing, but I'm just saying that you know we need to be prepared for the fact that growth will probably suffer as this cleanup I happens. I think there is a price to be paid because yeah. of the friction, but at the end of the day, everyone has to step onto the plate. It is of course the managements and the boards. It is the auditors, the rating agencies, the regulatory mechanisms. We mm. all need to ensure that we are doing our job well. Mm. It's only then that we'll really come to a cutting point of. Uh, trust and it is here that as this friction happens mm. there is some of the pain in the short run mm. but considering that we are looking at a medium to long term perspective it's a pain we have to live with and come out of it smarter cleaner and more efficient mm and trustworthy. Mm. So, you know, if I may just ask you a question, because so much of the conversation around liquidity has uh, been around NBFCs. My question now is, okay, Island FS is being dealt with, you've got the SFIO first charge sheet uh, uh, being filed in court as well. Are we, are we still looking at this as a systemic, as the possibility of a systemic risk? Or do you believe that the worst is behind us when it comes to the NBFC crisis? No, my view is, the challenges of the financial sector are specific. I do not believe they are systemic, but specific issues need to be dealt with. So uh, if the specific issues are not dealt with, can it become a systemic risk? I, I do not see the specific issues being large enough to create contagion for a systemic issue. Okay. But it is important to dis deal with the specific issues of the financial sector mm. firmly and fairly. But what would that mean? D does it mean a special carve-out, special dispensation for NBFCs, a special credit line? I mean, what are we talking about exactly? Uh, my sense is that finally, uh, good NBFCs uh, are getting money even today. I don't think that is an issue. In fact, today's papers carry an article, the credit spreads have narrowed. Yeah. The question is market is beginning to differentiate mm. between different categories of players at is, as is rightly done. I, if liquidity in the system is comfortable, the right players will get the money and wherever there are problems which are specific, mm. they need focus and need to be dealt with firmly. Mm -hmm. So let me ask all of you now for the national agenda, and I'll start by asking you, Mr. Kirloskar, because I would imagine that this is also going to be part of what the CII will uh, sort of deliberate upon with the government, and it's not one specific event. This is going to be a continuous journey. Uh, you know, outside of corporate taxes and the need for better corporate governance, uh, you know, what where, where do you really see industry being able to collaborate much more with government? I think my own personal view is that we need a behavioral change to mm. do anything. Uh, we talked about trust. We need a behavioral change across the board to develop mutual trust between industry, government, and society. And without mutual trust, mm. the economy won't come to 10%. I think we lose at least two, three percentage points only because of the trust deficit. Mm. This is one. Second, I personally also feel that 
government should focus all its efforts on agriculture mm. and the people at the bottom of the mm. pyramid. Mm. Leave the rest, leave industry pretty transparent and open, okay. which can happen only with the trust deficit being removed for, for the people who like us in industry. And, and, and let, us, let us do what we have to do. Mr. Kotak, I'll end by asking you about, uh, about the stock markets and, and where you are. I mean, everyone's talking about valuations and how, uh, you know, it, it, it sort of disconnect between reality and where valuations currently are. But yet, every day, new records being created for the Indian equity markets. You know, I give the optimistic side of the global situation. And two factors of significant optimism. Number one, as my friend Narendran said, Global commodity cycle yeah. is moderate, mm. yeah. okay? May not be very down, but yeah. not right. out of control. Right. So moderate global commodity cycle, and globally, interest mm. rates are low. Mm. US has a negative yield mm. curve. Mm. Overnight is higher than the 10 year. Yeah. So both these are wonderful sweet spots for India. Mm. And therefore, I'm optimistic about India. I'm optimistic about the economy. And I do believe this government has got these two factors in its favor, despite all the other macro headwinds we mm. talked about. Therefore, this is the time we must go for it. This is the time we must go for it. And well, I do hope that industry certainly does go for it. Uh, uh, thanks very much uh, for joining us here on the CNBC TV 18 special conversation for your thoughts and ideas uh, that I would imagine you will present to the government at some point in time. We're, of course, uh, beaming this uh, to, to everyone uh, in, in the policy circles who are watching. These are the ideas coming in here from the Confederation of Indian Industry to get the Indian economy uh, growing at double digits. Uh, Vikram Kirloskar, Uday Kotak, TV and Chandrajit Banerjee. Always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us. From all of us here, thanks very much for watching.